Well, hello. I'm Dr. Dana, and this is Laura. Hi. And we are excited to be with Jen Hunter again today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks We've for We've been me. chatting for, oh my gosh, like yeah. well over an hour already yeah. today. And so like, we just need to get this as a podcast because I think it will really help other um, businesses who are interested in a 501... C3. 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 Yeah, yeah. See yeah. how I'm like a 50 something. Anyway... Tell us about it and and who might benefit from this. Okay. Um, so we're going to really talk about the 501c3s, but there are over 30 options when you're looking at a 501c status. So, because um, obviously a 501c3 is your charitable, religious, or educational ed- um, organization. And so um, the others kind of fall under different categories. So if you're not one of those three, there could be a 501c status that you can get that's different. But most so. people fall under this 5013C. Yep, C3. C3. Ah, <laughs> C3PO. I actually was thinking C3PO <laughs> and R2D2, and, and then I'm like, God, what am I talking about? Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to look like an idiot talking about Star Wars when we're trying to run a business here. Hey, but, uh, you know what? The My Force husband with us. Yeah. named all of our kids, so we are Eric's Jedi Hunters. Oh, there you and go. And our oh. dogs are all Star Wars characters. So oh my God, that's so you're in that good company great. over here. You're good. Good, good. Well, some days I feel like Darth Vader though too. You know what I'm like? I, I'm just going to like, you know, like he close calls me daily. Yes. Oh, Darth Vader. <laughs> that's his nickname. <laughs> that's great. That's funny. That's great. So no, we can talk about Star Wars. It's fine. And still be totally professional. It's no problem. And we're women <laughs> talking about Star Wars. Like it's okay. We're trailblazers. Yeah, it's all right. right. Yes. But Laura, I was just saying, I'm just going to say anything because I, I, I don't I, know anything about Star Wars. I was about to say, I don't know that Laura knows Star Wars <laughs> and gets confused at the, like, we watched, you know, uh, four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three, and then seven, eight, and nine. And she's like, what the? Yeah. And then you have three and a half. Uh, so yes. I didn't even realize that Rogue One was like three and a half. And I yes. sat through the whole movie theater right after the IMAX had got done. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> And my husband had to explain to me. I was like, "Oh well, now let's go see it again because now I get it." Right? Oh my right. gosh, now that's I get it. hilarious! It's so oh my gosh. Although I'm of the age that I saw the first Star Wars in the movie theater. Yes, I fell asleep and took a nap. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that's how interested Fantastic. I was. <laughs> that, that's great. I loved it so much when I was a kid, and you know, of course, you know, we all want to be Princess Leia. She's beautiful and cinnamon rolls. Yes, <laughs> on her on head. Her hair. <laughs> So I was not of the generation when it came out, but my husband was. But I was there when they redid one, two, and three. And I think she just called anyone. ones. Did I did not. Yeah, no. It's okay. Seasoned. I did not. I just I said I wasn't there for it. Um, so I was of the age. I'm like, I didn't want to be Leia. I wanted to be uh, Princess Amidala or oh, Padme. Yes. I yes. have no idea what you're saying, but that's okay. <laughs> so did you like one, two, and three better? I, I than, did, but yes. I think it's because it came out when I was a kid. Okay. I loved so. one, two, and three. And I, I just really did. I just loved the whole story. And by the time I got to three, I'm like crying at the TV. Don't go to the dark side. Yeah. Don't do it. Like you know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. And yet you don't want it to happen. And I mean, I was just uh, in tears the whole thing. But I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Oh, yeah. Disney bought a landmine when they bought Star oh, Wars. Absolutely. Absolutely. And seeing <clears throat> all the stories. So anyway, maybe we should go back to five. <laughs> So, all right. 501c3. Perfect. 501c3s. So, <laughs> why would somebody want to start a 501c3? Well, that was the question so, I had. <laughs> yes. So, why? Um, I think one of the best options is is it gives um, donations that are made to the 501c3 are tax deductible. So, crowdfunding is going to be a whole lot better when you're trying to get funds in for your business. Um, but if it's also great when you're trying to give back to your community. And I think when we were discussing what you're both doing, it definitely falls in those categories mm-hmm. of giving back. So, so any business can run a profitable business. Well, hopefully it's profitable, right? right. So you just run a, a business. Because like the Rogue for-profit Chef, business. A for-profit. Right. The Rogue Chef is for profit. We're trying to make money, right? right. But we would, and, and we have done things for the community, and we do charitable events, but 
categorizing that and as a 501c3, like I'm going to have to like cheat. I should put a little cheat sheet in front of me. Uh, and then you'll you'll mark like R2D2. And then I'm like, oh yeah, it's R2D2. Anyway, um, so I should set up one of those under the Rogue Chef for all those charitable events that I do, charitable donations. Or make it a sister company. I mean, okay. you could put it under or you could put it, I would do almost like a sister company to where it's its own entity where it has its own EIN and it's completely separate. Um, and so the rogue chef is the one who's preparing all of it okay. and donating to the nonprofit. And okay. then that nonprofit's then turning around to give the proceeds to Emma's Mac and Cheesies. Okay. And and so I I just kind of wanted to be clear for people who do have a business for profit because I know a lot of people are like well I have a for profit business so I don't even want to think about that or talk about it but it really is worth looking into. It's definitely worth looking into. I think everything is worth looking into. I mean, you don't know what you don't know until you know. That's true. We were so just talking about we that. We did just talk about that. So I think if you aren't sure if it's a good fit, maybe it is something to look into because the tax deductions for the income that you can make um, in your nonprofit. And it's not income, but it's donations. Um, you know, when we're we're bit in business, we're trying to start businesses. One of the ways that you can do it is through crowdfunding. Well, there's nothing that says that a 501c3 can't be crowdfunded. Okay. And so that's what you see a lot of when you're on TV and you're watching Susan G. Komen. She's crowdfunding when she's throwing up a QR code saying make donations for breast cancer awareness. Okay. That's crowdfunding. I didn't, I didn't realize that was crowdfunding. I, I okay. think I was only thinking crowdfunding is these things on Facebook or things we see on social media. It could be. I mean, crowdfunding comes from a, diff a lot of different ways. I can go and crowdfund for um, the manager at Casey's who's fighting brain cancer. And be like, hey, you know what? We're trying to raise money to help her with medical expenses because she's having brain cancer and she's going to be out of work. So you can crowdfund that on Facebook. You can crowdfund that with a GoFundMe. You can crowdfund that on a podcast. Okay. Like, there's no – crowdfunding is just that. It's how do you get it to the masses to bring money in. So we went up to Kansas City for a women's conference, and they were crowdfunding for um, Operation Child – the child's Christmas boxes. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, for yeah, the kids right. in third world countries. And so they threw up a QR code during intermission, before it started, and then they took time at the very end to, again, try to make their goal. Like, they had a goal for this two-day event of what they were trying to make. Wow. And they were using it. But then they were also like, hey, share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Instagram whatever social media presence you're using to help us make $250,000. And they cleared it. Wow. By just a, you know, just a theater full of women from all over Missouri and Kansas city to try to raise money for these kids to have some clean water food. And so crowdfunding is for anybody. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Helpful. And then they can use that $250,000 in any way through the, so it depends on how they on, – on the backside. So they could have a mission statement that says, you know what, we're going to go out and we're going to have um, these organizations that we're going to be part of taking in and we're going to try to make money there. And we're going to throw up a QR code at these five events. And any proceeds made at these five events are now going to go to A, B, and C. And okay. so they can already have that. But that's between them and their board of directors. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what legally can A, B, and C be? I mean, can these people use it to pay for like – It could be salaries. salaries. Yeah, that's It could be operational expenses, just making sure that you're keeping the doors open. Because if you're trying to bring um, help towards anybody with um, any kind of – whatever – this is really hard. Uh, it could be towards anything your nonprofit is categorized for. So if you're – and it has to line up with a mission statement. So mm -hmm. when you are creating your 501c3 and you've chosen your name and then you go right into, okay, so what is our purpose? Why are we creating this 501c3? Um, so it could be your purpose statement. It could be a mission statement. You know, same thing, more or less. Um, so you're wanting to make sure that whatever it is – 
it's meeting those. So if you are creating a 501c3 because you are in foster care and you're trying to help other kids in the foster care system have a leg up in life, then you can make with your board of directors whatever that's going to look like. So if you're going to partner up with um, Jeans for Teens mm-hmm. for the kids in, that can't afford jeans, then you're going to go ahead and say, all right, we're going to make A is going to be we're going to give 25% to Jeans for Teens to help them make, able to get kids jeans in the foster care system. We're going to uh, go buy gift cards of $25 for each kid, and we're going to donate them out to the kids in the Taney and Stone County area, whatever it is, as long as it's meeting your mission statement. And so that's also where you got to really watch your mission statements because as you grow, and that's, I hope, what everybody's trying to do when they're in business, is you want to grow. You don't want to also be landlocked to only two counties if you could be helping others just on the other side of Arkansas um, and just north of us, or even like go out towards like Ozark County and Webster County. So you're saying County. that because somebody might put in their mission statement to care for uh, people within the Tanny and Stone County communities, correct? Right. So don't be that specific. I wouldn't be that making... specific because you're you're not going to be. What if there's a family that's yeah just over an hour away in Theodosia, but they have to come to Branson all the time, but they're trying to get some help and they can't get help because they don't they fall live. in mm-hmm. this Taney and, to- Taney, Taney and Stone County. Good Lord. <laughs> okay. So, but is there some rules like for being specific? I mean, can you just be just so general? I, I think what people worry about, I worry about, I'm sure that you do. Like if I started one of these, that the federal government's going to come back and like, look, you screwed this up and now we're going to like shut down your whole business. Right. right. Okay. So there are, there are some, there are some guidelines. So you want to have it. Purpose statement should be no more than 50 words. So your okay. purpose statement is like, very concise. Here, very concise, and okay. here's like the punch, but then your mission statement kind of broadens mm-hmm. that and gives you can go a little bit more in depth than okay. fifty words. Um, then you want to be able to ca- be able to offer the classification of the type of service. Um, so it could be uh, humanitarian, religious, educational, something along those lines. Um, Medical is becoming a really big one, especially in our region. Um, And is medical a category in itself? So it can, it's classified, um, it's not medical. I think it's considered health wellness. Health and wellness is where it falls. Okay. But it could be classified, you know, it is medical Mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. Um, You want to have very descriptive language. So um, you want to have it to add more context, um, like the specifics of the types of services you're offered um, and it, it does say the geographical area of the organization, but you could just make your geographical location be Missouri, Arkansas, and any of the surround. You can make it the any state that touches Missouri. Okay, Absolutely. there's eight states that touch Missouri. So if you are right, you could do uh, Central United States, right? right. So they just the want some general statement about where it's going to be located. Right. So they know like you're within the United States here or right. you're within. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So like I said, I wouldn't be so specific like to two counties. Okay. But I would definitely maybe say any surrounding states of and within the state of Missouri. That's okay. actually really good. Like, is. Is especially we're like minutes away from Arkansas. Right. right. And it's right. like, of course we're going to get customers from Arkansas. Right. You're, you're what? Uh, ten miles from here, from the as a crow flies. Yeah, right. From I don't even know if it's that far. I mean, it's 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 just right down sixty five. That's it. Right. And then you're what an hour and ten fifteen minutes from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're three and a half hours from Kansas. About four hours from Nebraska. Five. Four and a half, five hours from say Illinois, Illinois, mm-hmm. yeah, um, Tennessee, Iowa. <laughs> I can make it to Iowa in six hours. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so, I don't want to ride with you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, there's definitely options. Okay, but you know, we also live in a tourist town. Mm-hmm. That's true. So when you're looking at this, we have people who are going to drive at least eight hours to come to Branson, Missouri. That's sure. true. And they do. so if they are living within a state that is with an eight-hour drive, which all of those are, 
then you can list those out and be like, absolutely, we can. We would love to help you guys out just because you're vacationing here for a week and, oh, no, you've gotten sick. Let's hit you with um, being able to go into one of these care clinics mm-hmm. that all you have to do is show them income. Most people have their pay stubs on their phone anymore because your email's on your phone. Mm-hmm. So you could easily show income um, at some of the non-profitable clinics that we have here in Taney County, but they aren't able to go see because they're landlocked because mm-hmm. they don't. They aren't a resident of those two counties. Sure. sure. Um, and nobody wants to go sit in urgent care in Branson. You're there for like five hours at least. I don't think anybody ever wants to sit in urgent care <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> like, it's just no fun. But that's your option. It, right. Mm-hmm. Right. It is. So having a minute clinic kind of thing would not be a bad idea for here where it is a charitable organization that is allowing anybody that can. You can even make it to where they're visiting from within the United States. Because what if you have somebody from Alaska? Right. Right. <laughs> right. True. I mean. Right. Right. As and we've as served you... people who have flown in from all over the country, you know, and they're like, it's cold here. I'm like, where are you from? California. You know, oh. and people from New York City. And I, I just love meeting people who fly in here. Absolutely. I'm like, why are you coming to Branson? I mean, it's cool. Yeah, whatever. Like, I'm glad you're here, but. You know, yeah, why Branson? Right. Well, why Branson? Right, right. Because yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> it is. And they always say, you know, because it's just so down to earth, so relaxing. Uh, and, and the lakes we have here. They're oh, beautiful. Gosh. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I know we get asked that a lot because we travel a lot. And we just went to, we did Thanksgiving in Dolphin Island, Alabama. And we had the same question of, what made you come here in Thanksgiving? Right. Because it was kind of icky weather the whole time. It was rainy at least every day. Um, for a couple hours, but I'm like because I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I be away from people, it, it was off season there. I like right. going to places where in the off season mm-hmm. where there is less people and it's not jam packed. But that's probably because I do live in a tourist town, and so I do want to get away from the hustle and bustle of a tourism town. Sure, that makes sense. So, so one of the questions I had for you in when we were you came in and you're like okay you have to start an LLC and I'm like well I have an LLC and you're like no 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 you have to designate it as a 501c3 which was very confusing to me but then I finally figured it out a five you have to be an LLC but when you go in to um the secretary of state yep it's going to ask you are you a 501c3 or are you going to be what like an S corp for, yeah, yeah for profit for pro- or an LLC sole proprietor partnership what is your designation? Like, that's a question they're going to ask. Yeah, and then, like, I guess for purposes of taxes. And um, so I took my LLC, terminated it. <laughs> so tomorrow I'm going to go back and restart my LLC yep. so I can choose the 501c3 right. on it. But that was kind of confusing. And the other thing I was telling you, like, we need to be sure and tell everyone, don't go to these other pages. Go to your actual secretaryofstate.gov Yep, Website. and that's not the first thing that comes up when you Google nope, this to not. do it because Mm-mm. people want you want to pay. I mean, you know, they want you to pay them to set this all up. Well, right. they make, they make it sound so like it's this is so complicated, which is crazy because ever since I set up that LLC, like now the algorithm says, "Hey, she's an LLC." Every ad on YouTube and this and that is all about LLCs, and I'm like, yep. "Wow, they make it sound like this is like so overwhelming." And literally, it took me ten minutes. I know. <laughs> so. I think. I think it's the thought of that makes it kind of daunting, but the task itself is super easy. Yeah, that, it is. That's really good to know because I I almost feel overwhelmed by it to think, what if I screw this up? Again, you know, somebody's going to come in and like, you've screwed this up and you've been doing this for years and you're an idiot and you don't know what you're doing. So um, I feel like I fall into that category all the time, you know, and <laughs> yeah. so you're, and that you're, fear of that. But yeah, you're, you're not. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And yes, but then when I'm paying the government like lots of money because I screwed up, that's where people oh, start well, to yeah, feel you like, wanna... how did I set how, what what did I do wrong? Well, right. what you did wrong was you didn't hire her. <laughs> this is, you got to surround right. yourself with the right people. <laughs> that's and right. I I'm a big proponent of I don't know the answer, but it doesn't mean I don't have somebody in my phone that doesn't know have that answer. Or if I know them, maybe they can make a connection to someone. You know, mm-hmm. so you can maybe get that contact through someone you know. Yeah. What a great networking tool. I know. Oh, absolutely. Because we've talked about networking I before know, and how time. it's so important. <laughs> and I love using the chambers. You know, when I have a question about who do I need to contact, one mm-hmm. of my first people I'll ever think about calling is John or Alice at the Hollister Chamber. Like, they're they're usually in the very first three people I come up in my head with. Nice. nice. 
That's yeah, a great idea. Know, yeah. Right. And if you're associated with more than one chamber, then you have access to even more right. people. Right. And so like I'm in four I'm in four chambers. That's crazy to think about. But that makes my network yes. that much bigger. It does. And yeah. so it's always great to know who you can know. Um I know I had I had a customer that I said I was I'm a member of the Hollister Chamber and I was looking for a bookkeeper because it woke up in the middle of the night saying I needed a bookkeeper. Didn't know why I needed a bookkeeper, but I was woke up thinking I needed it. So I got on the Hollister Chamber and while well, you're you know, your business starts with a B. So you're right at the front of the list and it's bookkeeping is in your business name. And I went, Yep, that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do other things, but for that one business, that's sure. what we do. Sure. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Being associated with the chambers is, uh, I've, I've yeah. just found it very beneficial. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, They're people, the gatekeepers people. to your community. They are. They really sure. are. They are. And what people don't know, though, like when I was telling my mom, you know, yeah, we're part of the chambers. And she's like, well, that's free. Do you pay for that? Yeah, you do pay for it, but it's worth it. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's from, I always, when I'm making out my next year's uh, budgets for what I'm going to be spending money on, those chambers Memberships, those are like top of the list of things that I want to make sure my money is going to. Absolutely. Because they are going to be my best referral partners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yep, I agree. So, um, so all right. Um, so, once you kind of have your purpose statement. Okay. We need to file your ar- articles of incorporation. Um, and you're going to do that with the Secretary of State office. But you're also going to be uh, doing it with the IRS. And so depending on your state, um, they may have a packet for a nonprofit formation that will help you formulate your whole nonprofit and give you access to things that you don't normally have if you don't contact your state and say, um, we've started a nonprofit and I just need to see if you guys have a formation packet just to kind of help me along the way. And most states, offices, you're going to find out they're super helpful once you get off hold. (laughs) <laughs> Once okay. You get <laughs> okay. And the IRS is the same way. Um, anytime. So I they pick- don't automatically send this to you. It's not something you can find online. You need to reach out to the Secretary of State's office and ask them if they have a nonprofit formation packet. Okay, a nonprofit formation packet. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good to um, know. And so it kind of helps you just understand the requirements um, and see kind of what all that they're required are because each state is different. Okay. Um. And then obviously go through the IRS for your tax exemption. Um, and that's one thing you'll get through your state packet is they're going to tell you how to get your tax exempt status as a 501c3 because okay. that's a whole nother format filing to get. Um, okay. But that's just giving you knowledge. Oh, yeah. You, absolutely. You don't want to have to go to Walmart and pay sales tax on something for the nonprofit. That's true. If, if you don't have to. And mm-hmm. so having your nonprofit status that's sales tax exempt, then you can go to Walmart, go to customer service. They'll give you a documentation. Uh, you, prevent, you present your documentation and they'll give you a card that every time you check out for the business, you're getting tax exempt. And now with online, it's even easier because you can upload it to your um, account mm-hmm. with Walmart, Sam's, Office Depot, wherever, and Upload your tax exempt filing, and then your whenever you check out under that account, you're always going to have sales tax free. Oh, that's yeah, good to know. It does, which yeah. is fantastic. Like, are all these tax free? You know, or which ones are tax free? It yep. does ask that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know that's super great. And then um, getting, like I said, through the IRS, your EIN. Um, so you have to have an EIN even with the five hundred one c three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because uh, you're going to be filing a nine ninety at the end of the year for your taxes. Okay. Um. So your year runs a little differently for tax seasons. Uh, tax season with a nonprofit. Oh. So everybody knows that in taxes are due in April fifteenth. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's now not fifteenth, but I like to keep that as a rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. But for nonprofits, it's May 15th. Oh, oh so I did it's not an know that. extra month okay. to get the nonprofit. So you'll hear a lot of times when you're talking to accountants and tax prepara- uh, preparers, they'll be like, oh, nonprofit? Okay, we're going to wait until April 16th right. to try to get you taken <laughs> care of. And then they spend that last month. They'll get all of their um, taxes filed or ask for an extension. So then they can get that in that one month, try to get all the nonprofits done. And then 
again, you can do the same thing with an extension for a nonprofit like you do for a for-profit. It's just one month later than your for-profit business. Okay. Okay. So you have a, that extra month of breathing space. So, And then would you say like, um, you know, sometimes when I file taxes, I'm like, oh, I owe money. I owe money, right? Is that going to be the same way with a, uh, with a 5013C? C3. C3. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get it right by the end of the show, right? But is it the same? Like, we're going to have to pay taxes? Like, what? what is it that we might end up having to pay at the end of the year? Well, it depends on your business. Okay. Um. So 501c3s are typically audit-free. Okay. So if you do have five employees, you will have to have a work comp audit done. That's just a requirement of work comp. Mm-hmm. But – um. There is a little bit more leeway. However, if you've paid any time, any kind of attention to the news, you will find out that there are nonprofits that do get audited and they do end up paying the government okay. because they are a very large organization and they didn't use the funds how they were supposed to. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's typically where that's coming in. So that's a hard an- question to answer because we're talking in um, general terms. General terms here. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas each each business is individual, you okay. know, so what you do from year to year, you're going to have gains and losses. I know a lot of businesses are taking a lot of loss this year compared to the last couple of years. Right. So um, it, it's hard to say in a generalization, but typically, no, you're not. Okay. Unless you're just not spending your funds properly. Okay. Okay. And is there somebody who teaches you, like, this is how you can spend the funds or that packet? Will that packet have all that information? So the packet's going to be more generalized as far as the state requirements are going. Okay. You're going to want to hire someone like myself or another accountant or an enrolled agent that can help you with your tax filings. Okay. Um, okay. And making it's not something sure- I should do on TurboTax by myself. I wouldn't do TurboTax, <laughs> okay. no, but okay. definitely a QuickBooks. Okay. Um, okay. QuickBooks does have a nonprofit option. And then with all nonprofits, you want to make sure you have a donor software. So it could be like Bloomerang, Donor Perfect, Virtuous. There's other options. Um, but definitely doing like QuickBooks Online. Okay. Um, and you can get QuickBooks Online for as low as $30 a month. And that can be paid for with the funds from your 501c3. Right. Yes. Because you're using it for the business, for the nonprofit to track your income, your expenses. If you do end up having a payroll, which I hope everybody ends up having some sort of payroll, at least if nothing else for yourself and Mm -hmm. whoever else is working in the business. Right. um, You want to make sure that you have a payroll system that's taking out the taxes if you are making sales within your nonprofit because uh, you're selling an item, well, then you need to be able to have that as a trackable income or expense. So you're going to still have expenses. So how are you tracking that? And it makes our job as an accountant a lot easier if you're using some sort of accounting software. It doesn't have to be QuickBooks. It's just the preferred one that I like. Okay. And your regular business will have one uh, QuickBooks and then your um, charitable business will have another one. Correct. They, they do not intertwine in any way, even though you are running both of them. Correct. Okay. They are two okay. separate entities with their own tax filing designation numbers and we don't co Mingle. Yeah, we don't co-mingle <laughs> funds. Okay. That's okay. a big – I wasn't going to say cohabitat, but that's not right. <laughs> no, no, no co-mingle um, funds. Okay. So, so you're talking about the donor websites like the Boomerang. What exactly does that mean? So, okay, so your donor tracking software is going to be Bloomerang, Donor Perfect, Virtuous. There's a lot more out there. Um, they all have their own fee structures and different – uh, pros and cons to each of them. I've used those three specifically, so I like to mention them um, because they do work well with your QuickBooks Online. And But what it does is that when you get a donation, it comes through that software. So um, if you are using, if you make a donation, if Laura makes a donation to a nonprofit here in the area, that donation is actually going to go through the donor software, not your QuickBooks but then it's going to get all of your information when you make that donation. So guess what? At the end of the year, come January 31st, you're going to have that donation receipt 
emailed or mailed to your house from that donor software. And so then that way you can track your donations for your tax deductions. Okay. Okay. And so that's where that donor software really becomes, I would say, almost more important than your accounting software. So can you still take donations if someone walks in and says, I love what you're doing. Here's $100. Absolutely. You just got to put it in your donor software. So you just add that to the amount. Okay. And then, right. and you say, we want to get this information because this is a tax deduction for you. Right. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And so it's like when you go to Goodwill and you donate stuff and then you don't get your donation receipt. Right. And that's not, I mean, I'm, I love that you're donating your, you know, clothes and items and stuff, but get that donation receipt because every penny counts. Right. What if someone doesn't want to give you their name and it's an anonymous donor? Then you just put it as an anonymous donor. Oh, okay. So it allows it. you to do all of that. You can absolutely okay. have anonymous donors. Okay. okay. Um, hmm. I I know there's been donors that they'll donate a large sum of money, but they don't want it to be known. Mm-hmm. So they just ask it to not be publicized. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And so they'll, you know, you leave them as an anonymous donor, but you can track it for their charitable giving. Sure. At the okay. End of the that year. makes sure. sense. Okay. So once you have this set up and going, like you, you can ask for donations. You can run this just, so just like any. Yeah, absolutely. So you can be, as you're doing this wonderful podcast, right. you can say, we are on today's podcast. Um, we're going to be highlighting this charitable organization and you can donate here below. So then that way on your Spotify, your YouTube, whatever, you can have a QR code or a link that takes that straight there from that podcast. So anybody who hears it, and if they like what they're hearing about this charitable organization, then you can have donations go towards them, and that's considered crowdfunding. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. So it's the getting it set up part, I think, that... The getting set up is the daunting part of it. Yes. I don't know, because I think once you cross that, you still have to run this thing and know how to... Because we had talked about, like, you have to have board members and right. meetings. And all, I'm like, holy So you need cow. to have your board of directors, which needs to be a minimum of three members or directors. And um, that's who the, the directors are going to be the ones who are making your financial and policy decisions for your nonprofit. Um, and so you're wanting to make sure that it's at least three. I like odd numbers. So you never have you know, a break even. Um, But then you're going to also hold a meeting of the board. That can be a quarterly meeting. That could be a monthly meeting. Um, But you need to have meeting minutes. Um, And in those meetings, you're going to be taking care of the formalities of changing bylaws, adding additional officers, um, recording the receipts of your federal and tax state exemptions. If uh, you get a donation that you weren't anticipating from on from an individual, and now you have to reallocate these funds, you can either go before your board of directors or create a committee, a finance committee, and that finance committee will come up some areas that they can see the financial need within that nonprofit to allocate those funds. But you have to take those ideas of where you want to allocate those funds back to the board of directors, and they have to approve it. And it all needs to be recorded or have it in writing as to who's done what. And so making sure you have a secretary who can handle meeting notes uh, is all, minutes is great. Um, and so uh, get your licenses and permits after you have that initial meeting where you're, you know, acknowledging the board members and setting up um, your bylaws and all your things that are officially saying, we are official, today is day one of our nonprofit that's that first, men, you know, very first meeting you're going to have. Then you're going to be going and getting your licenses and permits that are needed within yours. So if you're located within a city, you're going to need to have your city permits, county, state, whatever. Okay. Okay. For your business. So is there like something that helps us to, like, I wouldn't begin to know the first thing about how we need to conduct said meeting. <laughs> um. I, yeah, so I know a lot of people who like to use Robert's Rules of Order. I was just about to say, a lot of people follow Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. It seems to be best, yes. That's that's usually the easiest, uh, and I also kind of think it's probably industry standard for nonprofits to run board meetings off of that book. Okay. Um, I know a lot of cities that run their city meetings off of Robert's Rules of Order. So there's lots of different options. 
Um, you can I've also, also uh, met people who say, who's Robert? Like they don't have <laughs> yeah. any clue like what, what that might be. Right. What's like, who's Robert? I don't even know who Robert is. Robert, is he coming in the show? Do we need to get a microphone for him? Like what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's definitely, I would say I liked reading the IRS codes that have changed more recently than reading Robert's Rules of Order. Oh my God. Yeah, like there is a special place for that book. Okay, and so do they not, have it like in a workbook fashion where you just fill it in? Maybe so. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. I. Mean. It wouldn't be Robert's shocking. rules for dummies. <laughs> yes, I, I'm certain that there's something like that out there. Yeah. Um, I also want to find out, like, when you say, "Oh, you need this board of directors and you need all this," I'm sort of panicked. Like, I don't really trust too many people. So that can be me. That can be my husband. Uh, mm. No. Yeah. Or, or it can be. It could yes. be. Okay. So I mean. Your board of directors could be the three of us. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? If if you had um it it could be. It okay. could be whoever you want it to be. Um I know there is a board that is made up of a husband, a, a husband, a wife and a son. Okay. And they are over a nonprofit that uh helps uh ki- adults that is like their other son um, that is mentally handicapped. And so they've created a nonprofit that's just for helping him and other adults like him. Okay. And so um, they don't necessarily follow all the rules, which kind of has left them with having some issues trying to get funding, but they're figuring it out as they're going along, you know, I don't want to say fake it till you make it, but that's kind of what they're doing. Okay. And they're and, doing quite well at it. And it kind of gets rid of that fear of like, well, wait a minute, I have to like uh, rent a space and get these big board of directors. Yeah. And, you know, no, I don't have, have to Jeff do that. come Have everybody come over and have Jeff cook a meal and yes. you can sit around the table and have a board meeting while you're eating a wonderful meal prepared, you know, prepared by I Jeff. I think that you'd that, want to be smart. I don't like the idea of husband, wife, and son just because you – don't I mean I know we throw in, around the diversity word a lot and I don't mean diversity as far as as we t- traditionally think of diversity I mean diversity as far as different business experiences right. and if you have different people in different business areas who are professionals man what a great way to come in and then they're going to have a different point of view and like yeah but you may not see this but they will they'll see it coming right. down the True. road and yeah. there are people in this community who are great at like they love creating boards. Like that is like their that feeds their soul in mm-hmm. helping nonprofits creating a good strong board. Because you're right, you want it to be diversified. Yeah. But in the beginning days, maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I would definitely want to make sure you have somebody who understands the finances mm-hmm. on your board. Yeah. Like somebody who is good with numbers needs to be on that board, who can. Also not be uh, – finances are emotional. And so you kind of mm-hmm. want to have mm-hmm. somebody who is not emotionally attached to it. That I absolutely so, agree with that. I had to think about how I was going to put that because money is – and that's what I like to tell everybody. Like I realize like I mess with people's money all day long, all day, every day. So I have to be super uh, conscientious – especially when I'm coming to them going, so you're not going to like what I have to say, but I need you to hear me out the whole way, and then we can make a game plan on how to get to where you want to be, but also stay within the confines of the law. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I I think even as uh, running a husband and wife business, you know, as you know, it's some that finances can be very emotional. Yes, absolutely. Right. And like I'm trying to talk about business money here, not our own money, mm-hmm. but do they sometimes get they coagulate uh, sometimes? They Absolutely, do. they do. Yeah, and and it can be frustrating. So, sure. uh, yeah. and you know, because you run this business with your husband, so not okay. Yes and no. Okay. So uh, the bookkeeping is mine. Okay. Oh, good. Good to know. And then he has Friesland Services is his. And then we have Borman Business Innovations. Okay. But he will tell you he wants no part of the finances of any of the above. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. I mean, but, if you know what you're doing, I wouldn't want any of it either. But I, I'm i not the person for sales and marketing. It is. I, I can do this all day long. This is, this is a safe space. But it is not my place to go do cold calls. Like mm-hmm. the chamber has got um, – 
that we're going to be doing a chamber drive. Mm-hmm. They're like, we're going to have people calling people. I'm like, that's not for me. Right. Oh. They're like, but we're going to have to have people in the back doing data entry. That's where you put me. Like, I know me to know that I'm not the person to kind of do cold calling or walk up to people at the luncheons that I don't know going, hi, this is who I am. This is what I do. And this is why you need me in your life. Right. That's not me, but that is so my husband mm-hmm. because he well knows everyone. <laughs> okay. And if he doesn't know them, he acts yeah. like he Sorry. knows them. Playing footsie with you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think that's also what makes a good husband-wife team is when you each know what your yes. highs are and what your lows are. Definitely. And being able to kind of work together to offset Definitely. My husband does everything in the kitchen, all the cooking, and I stay out of the kitchen. And then when I go in the kitchen to help, it doesn't always go well. But um, I, tr- I try. Like, I really have the spirit of trying and being positive. But, you know, God just doesn't give these gifts and skills to everybody. Like, right. not everybody can cook, and I'm one of them. So, <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm kind of terrible. Well, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how Jeff is. I kind of get territorial in my kitchen. Like, I'm in the space of my kids are between – uh, nine and 16 almost. And I need to teach them how to do the things so right. they go to college, they won't starve to death. True. <laughs> but it's my kitchen and get out of my way. Right. Like that's right. also where I'm at. So, so have them start making videos for you, right? Because sometimes I feel like I can get in and uh, understand the process and understand what's happening when I'm like, okay, let me video this or can you explain what you're doing here? Um, and then, you know, you can use those videos yeah. too. Recipes have been a disaster in our life. <laughs> we like, we'll pull out great grandma's recipe book. Right. And I'm be like, all right, so today you're going to make chicken and dumplings. Here's her handwriting on the uh, recipe card. This is what you need to do because mom's out and grandma can't cook this whole like chicken and dumpling rolling out the dough and everything like that. But she can kind of help you if you don't know what something is or right. maybe you can't read mm-hmm. the cursive. Uh, that's what I was about to say. Is it written in cursive? Because that's sort of code, you know. <laughs> right. I think – so our kids are in a private school and they only teach cursive. Really? Excellent. Which is fantastic. So my kids can read, but we do have a family member that wasn't able to read his great-grandmother's handwriting because she wrote in cursive. And it kind of broke my heart going, ugh, my kids are going to – They're I, at that point, I'm like, my kids will know how to read cursive. Yeah. Right. And right. so I, t- I think I've intentionally always wrote in cursive. Mm-hmm. Around my kids, um, but then don't ask me to do it in business because I just don't in business. Um, and numbers aren't in cursive very well either. No, but I put lines in my sevens and slashes through my zeros. Okay. And so people think I'm kind of weird. I'm like, but I don't differentiate the question between a one and a seven. That's true. And a That's zero right. and a no. That's right. That's true. People so, know. Yeah, people know. Yeah. Um. So... When it comes to nonprofits versus for profits, you're going to have two different types of accounting. Did you know that? No. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> so it's definitely not your grandma's accounting. Um, so uh, you want to have the generally accepted accounting practices, which is called GAP. Um, uh, they're designated, they're designed to be uh, established baseline procedures for ensuring that your bookkeeping within the organization is consistent and transparent. And all nonprofits should be following this. Okay. All businesses should be following this. But um, especially nonprofits because sometimes you're going to have donors that are going to look at your books. Um, oh. And because they want to make sure that the money that they're giving is going where you're saying it's going. And so that makes sense. your bookkeeping needs to be very um, – some people say less is more. I, I like to say more is more. Like you, you need to have as much um, – information as possible in your chart of accounts. QuickBooks gives you immediately 250 accounts that you can use for your chart of accounts. Use them all. Okay. Like, because you're going to want to say, okay, well, office supplies. Well, what are your office supplies? I want to know where you're going on your ink, on your paper, on uh, cups, if you have a water fountain, if you're getting water. Okay. Like, they want to know Detail. Details. Okay. And they don't want to just see a line item of office supplies. So what is office supplies? Like It's everything. I don't know where to put I it. I just put it under <laughs> office supplies. In right. the end, it's all expenses. <laughs> you you would not you would die over my account. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Or I'd be like, oh, you're just gonna hire me right now so I can fix this. <laughs> I'm already sitting there going, 
Ooh, 2024 is going to be a whole different show here. <laughs> But yeah, no. somebody can't just hire you to take care of all the books and they don't need to worry about any of this. They can right. just run, just run it. Absolutely. We'll take care of it. I have a great team at my uh, disposal. And one of the one things when we went out to business, yes, I could absolutely charge you over $200 an hour, which any accounting firm in this area will do. Or I can keep my costs a little bit lower, keep it under what you'd be paying for um, an office person. So if you're going to hire someone, you're going to be at least paying them out at $15 an hour. Right. So $15 an hour. So let's get, just get the calculator out of here really fast. So let's say $15 an hour. I love how she's so numbers. You know, know. like at like, 40 oh, hours. Like so if they're 40 hours a week, that's 600 gross. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. A week. A week. Right. And then you have four a month. weeks. That's 2400 a month. Yeah. Wow. And the most, as of right now, the most we are charging is $1,000 a month. Um, now there are, I have one business that they are really big and they are running four enterprises out of them. And I gave him a really good deal and he's paying us 2000 a month, but I'm taking care of all of his businesses at that rate. Okay. And, wow. but you could take care of someone's business for a thousand dollars a month and you would just take care of now what, what the business and the charitable or those are two separate things. Those again? would be two separate things. Okay. Um, I do typically like to give a nice discount, uh, so I typically do about 10 to 15% discount on charitable organizations. And then if you are a veteran or first responder um, for our state or government, I will go ahead and give you a whopping 25% discount because okay, that's what sings to my soul and that's me giving mm-hmm. back. Um, so we actually just took on a client. Wow. He's a former firefighter and he was super excited when I was like, so yeah, it'd be a thousand dollars a month, but because you're a retired firefighter, it's going to be seven fifty. And I'm pretty sure if he could have hugged me, he would have because oh. he was super excited because that's $250 that he can reallocate somewhere else. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. I yeah. Know that's that amazing. Lots of seeing you later. From that. Oh, <laughs> yes. <for sure>. yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. The, <laughs> they, yeah, you're going to love me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and when you say take care of the bookkeeping, you just take care of all the bookkeeping, like QuickBooks, taxes. So we do your bookkeeping, so categorizing all your expenses. Um, we can take care of your accounts payable and receivable. So if you do not like to make those collection calls because somebody's over 30 days past due, well, guess what? We'll take care of that for you. And if it gets too far out of hand, then I work with a collections agency out of Denver that is super great with small businesses, and they will take over at that point. Wow, but, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I don't I don't have customers that, like, you ate. Or I'm not going to give you any food, I guess, if you don't. Pay some money. <laughs> right. I mean, right. right. So I I'm going to make you different. throw it back up. <laughs> but, here's, oh, well. but here's the other That's thing. That's a little harsh. But... <laughs> it's a cack. That's it. So in the last six months, um, my clients and I have noticed something that I think is super despicable. And I don't know how people like this can sleep at night. But they will give you a credit card. They will charge it because they've agreed to it. And you have a contracted agreement. And in that contract, it states that, you know, you have – you know, to give us writing and 30 days heads up. And one morning, the credit card company has done what's called a charge back. So the client has gone ahead and said, nope, I didn't get the services I was wanting or this, that, and the other. Wow. And they will charge back up to 45 days after the fact. So that money can go into your account, can clear your account, you can spend it, and you can wake up and your account is Way in the negative. Wow. wow. I've, w- I've wondered about that. And so, and I mean, it's not just like I've experienced this, but I also have clients that do auto mechanics. So uh, he, this guy, he had a $7,000 repair done on the car. He put it on a credit card and it was like 42 days after the fact. The guy has taken his car. He's paid for it, taken his car. It's working. It's fine. There's no problems. And oh, now he doesn't want to pay for it on his credit card statement. So he's doing a chargeback. And so, oh. and the credit card just does that with, I mean, they look into it or anything. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how it works on the credit card side of things, okay. but they're claiming, I mean, that's my thing. I'm like, how do you claim that your car isn't fixed? Right. I right. have filed your taxes. I have done your accounting. I've paid you. I've paid your employees. I've made sure that everything is ready to go for next tax season. And now you're saying that I didn't do my job for not one, but two months. And you've done a chargeback for two months. That's what happened to me personally. Wow. Um, 
So how do you fight that? I just send them to collections. Okay. Like, okay. I mean, I have to now dig myself out of the hole I'm in. But at that point, you're instantly terminated as a client, and you are immediately put in collections. And and they don't get any of their, their documents back. Nope. Nope. They didn't pay for it. I mean, it. that's the bad part about it is at that point, you've I, I own all your stuff. But mm. at the same time, I've now terminated you as a client. Right. So – I'm just gonna, I'm done working for you, but right. at the same time, I now have to pay my employees who've also worked for you, and that's the hard part. Um, is being like, okay, well, I started this business from zero. I don't have any kind of uh, line of credit. We haven't got any startup funds. We've done this all as a cash based business, and that's been really hard. You should set all of your clients up on ACH. They can do the same though with. Can they? They can. They can charge back on ACH? Essentially. I mean, it's just calling your bank and telling them that you didn't authorize the funds. And then guess what? You get a return. Mm. But if they signed an authorized form, they did. They did. But again, now you're in a fight. And then you can go to court. I mean, I could also put a lien on someone, but... That doesn't mean that, okay, great, now I have a lien on them, but they're, they've are they bought their home and they're not going to plan to move. And so I could be yeah, waiting 20-plus yeah. Yeah. years wow. on a lien if they don't want to ever move. I mean, it's just really shady, but this is also where we're at. And I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon. Wow. So, um, really? Well, that's a whole podcast in itself, how uh, to protect I, yourself. I, I would agree. Like, cash. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, let's just go cash. Yeah. Um, so and yet we're in a society that wants to go cashless. So I'm you know. terrified about going cashless. Like everything has a place. Like, don't get me wrong. I love hitting tap to pay. I love scanning right. a QR right. code and paying it. But at the same time, I'm an honest person. I'm not going to go back to my bank and say, like, I felt bad. Like I ordered um, some workout equipment off of online. Mm-hmm. It never arrived. 60 days after the fact, I've still never gotten it. I felt guilty walking into the bank saying, I paid for this, but I never got it. Is there a way we can go ahead and get my money back? Mm-hmm. Mm. Because the business just wasn't responding. It, it ended up being a scam, mm. which is one of those. Unfortunately, when you buy online, that's what you're up against. Right. This is true. Especially but, those Facebook ones. You know, that you're like, oh, I have to have this little wiener dog. Right. <laughs> oh, that's and me. again, yes. it was like $40. Like, yeah. It, it wouldn't have made or break me if right. I didn't have it. But at the same time, it's like, I don't it's want a you matter to keep of principle. my... You're right. <laughs> you took my money. I want my money back. That's mm-hmm. it. And exactly. so, but again, I feel guilty doing that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going, how in the world do these people sleep at night when they're doing this? And this is right. multiple people. I, I'm talking to multiple clients that are having this issue. Holy cow. It's, it's insane. becoming uh, maybe a way of life, a way to function, a way to... I don't know. Sometimes when you're taught things, you know, like you just know, well, this is the way we do it. You know? Right. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately right. for businesses like like ours who are trying to do this. Right. Um, so I think there's just knowing like you can go to foundations with a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Going back online to nonprofits. Yeah. <laughs> right. Get your funding from foundations. Um, I know for us here in the area, we have the Community Foundation of the Ozarks. It's a great place to go looking for uh, grants that are available through them. Um, you can go through the state websites and see kind of what governmental grants are out there. Uh, there is a lot of more red tape with them. Okay. Um, there's programs like Missouri has the Neighborhood Assistance Program, which is NAP. So seeing if you can qualify for funding through them and meeting their sh- their very uh, stringent uh, policies and how that money comes in. But there's always ways to get money with a nonprofit, and these are just a few of them. Um, is that also something that your company would do? Like if we paid additional money? Yeah, we can look at it? it. Yeah, okay. okay. I mean, I, ha- I know the background of it. Okay. Um, and again, it might not be me per se, but it doesn't mean I don't know someone. Right. Right. You know, yeah. right. Wasn't there a game back in the day called like Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon Kevin or something? Kevin Bacon, yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like we I all can Kevin do Bacon. that. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. Okay. True. Well, because here's the reality, and we were talking about this before the podcast. Like, you know, we were talking about all of this, and I'm like, okay, I can set up the LLC, but beyond that, I don't have time. Right. I don't have expertise, and really, time is of the value or. Whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Time is money. Yes, it It is. is, And 
at what point am I trying to figure out how to write grants and how to do all of these things? And I'm just, as the time is ticking by, days turn into weeks, into months, and I still don't have it all together. And I'm just missing out on all these opportunities. Or I just take someone and say, hey, you know what? You're a professional. You know what to do. And even if you don't do it, you you have a professional who does. Why don't I just pay you? Absolutely. I mean, there are definitely lots of grant writing companies in the area. Missouri State uh, University, they have the Go Lead program which is great for teaching you how to write grants and learning how to run a nonprofit and be a leader in nonprofit. So, mm-hmm. wow. you know, finding these organizations, there's so much more out there for nonprofits, I think, than there is for profit. Mm-hmm. And th- the beauty of it is, is nonprofits for many reasons get discounted pr- pricing. And so you're not having, you're getting more bang for your buck with a nonprofit. Well, and I think, you know, it, and I just, this is why I decided to go with my um, Ozarks Wellness to go nonprofit was because getting the startup to start what we want to do is going to take us forever. Right. And it's like, then we hustle just to try to put it back into the business to try to grow it. And in the meantime, we're not serving anybody right. because we don't, we are not capable of doing that. Or if we went nonprofit, it's like, okay, now we can have an infusion of money right. to be able to start giving services to people. And as a nonprofit, oh. you can also look at your local community. I mean, you're looking at health and wellness mm-hmm. with those arcs wellness. So you're looking at the medical. So you can go talk to your hospitals mm-hmm. and other organizations and see maybe there's something that's still good. But because of their policies and procedures, they can't use it or they have to get rid of it. Oh, yeah. And so then you're getting it as a donation. Absolutely. So in that point, it's an in-kind donation because it's mm-hmm. not costing either of you anything. It's just an exchange of materials. Oh, absolutely. And we, we we were talking about that earlier. It's like, my goodness, we already have a start on our supplies, but it's like we need this, 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 and this. And it's like we don't have the startup funds right. to even buy the basics. That sucks. <laughs> it does because you, you're ready to do good, but yeah. unless you have the money, you're not going to be able to. Yeah. 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 So. Which is that way with business. So I'm feeling like the more that we're learning, the more we the more we know we don't know, right? And the know, more we need to learn. <laughs> I know. It's like, all right, who can we get in here that can help us? Like we need the gateway on how to do it. But also at the end of the day, I think it's also um, you're going to get what you give. Yeah. And so, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. I, I can run an 18 hour a day business, but at the end of the day, if I'm sick and under the weather, am I really doing the best I can for my business or do I need to just take the day off mm-hmm. and get better? So then the next day I can get right back at it. Right. And go. Right. right. That makes sense. No, okay. absolutely. Well, and I think that's why we love this podcast is because we are bringing in people that we are learning so much from. And oh, it's yeah. like, if we're learning it, we know everyone listening is going to be learning too. So because like, I had no idea this was so integrated and maybe so simple that you say to set up, but mm, I don't know. I feel like I might just rather hire somebody to do it <laughs> um, because my time, you know, I'm doing so, much, yeah. so many other yeah. things right. as well. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. <laughs> absolutely. Totally well, get it. Jen, I thank you so much for coming on here and chatting with us oh, about yeah. 501 C threes. Yes, good. I actually had it in my head at that time. So, um, <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I do want to come back at a later time and talk about how to protect our businesses financially. Um, what agree. a great topic because that's actually pretty scary. And and at what point do you say we are going to have to go to cash on certain things or? Or, you know, some hard discussions of how are you going to yeah. run your business to protect yourself and stay in business? Absolutely. I'm sorry, but a $7,000 chargeback, that would put people out of business. Yeah. Right. And right. Um, I think people think small businesses have all the money in the world. Boy, nothing's farther from no. the truth. Absolutely not. So um, you're protecting ourselves. And then we had also talked about protection uh, along with like a holding company. So we were, we wanted to come oh, up. Oh, yeah. The, like holding company? Let's go. Like yeah. that one gets me kind of excited. I know. So like. And that's going to be a whole new podcast. Yeah. You're going to have to explain what is a holding company? Why do I need one? Yeah. And can what? I just pay you to set one up now? <laughs> I'm just excited. Like we can sit here and have these conversations. Yeah. And know that. Absolutely. I'm, I hope I'm welcome back time and time of again. Of course. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Tell us when you'd like to come back and chat. We oh, love I love you. this. This yeah. is like therapy. Therapy to me. Oh, good. Because it, because it, we're sitting in the background going, oh my God, this is so much to do. And you're like, oh, look, here you go. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I, love, I it. love it. I know. So, well, thank you once again for coming. I truly appreciate it. We'll definitely have you back and talk some more. And um, 
I hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.